A very warm welcome to our morning service. On this fourth Sunday after Easter, we continue to walk with the disciples in the aftermath of the resurrection. Christ reminding us once again that he will soon be ascending into heaven. However, we also hear from the book of Job, where Job proclaims, despite all he has to endure on this earth, I know that my Redeemer lives. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, 
all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church. And so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest and desire that which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The lesson is taken from Job, chapter 19, beginning at the 21st verse. Have pity on me, have pity on me, O you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me, never satisfied with my flesh? O oh, that my words were written down, O oh, that they were inscribed in a book. O oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock for ever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold and not another. My heart faints within me. Here endeth the lesson.
The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to John, beginning at the fifth verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and de declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be, be to thee, thee O Christ. Christ. Let us proclaim our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of the God, Father, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Nearly ten years ago, in December 2012, I turned 50. I am not a great fan of large parties, so we arranged to have a dinner party with a couple of close friends called James and Caroline. It was at our first vicarage in Gillingham in Dorset, and to celebrate the occasion we had a whole salmon, which I had caught earlier in the year. The added joy was that it was caught whilst James and I had been fishing together on the River Urn. It was on the second day of the holiday and the fish was caught in a pool called Lady Mary's Walk. The fish had been transported frozen back home and it was a lovely centrepiece for the evening, which I fondly remember to this day. This was at the end of 2012 and our friendship continued to grow over the next year, particularly as our children went to the same school. As many of you know, I like to work early in the morning, and in the spring of 2013, I was working at about 6 o'clock a.m. in my study. To my surprise, Aurora came downstairs, even earlier than usual, clutching her phone. She seemed very upset, and I obviously asked what the matter was. She replied, James has been murdered. 
we were both utterly devastated. I was even more taken aback as I had sent James a text at about eight o'clock the night before as I was helping him with a claim against his garage. The circumstances of his death were random, bizarre and tragic. He worked midweek in London and was having supper in a pub in Mortlake called The Tapestry. Although the exact circumstances are not clear, it appears that he was randomly stabbed in the chest with a pair of scissors and he died at St George's Hospital Tooting a few hours later. His killer stood trial the following year and was found guilty of manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. He was given a hospital order under the Mental Health Act. The random and bizarre nature of James's death left us all reeling and the repercussions of his death are obviously still felt by the family to this day. But of course the pertinent theological question that arises out of James's death and out of every other similar kind is the question of evil and suffering. Why do we suffer? In Christian philosophy, there are generally recognised to be two types of suffering. Natural suffering caused by nature and generally nothing to do with the actions of humans. And then so-called moral suffering that is caused by the actions of humans, such as acts of murder. Why do these happen to anyone? And most of all, why do they happen to wholly innocent men and women like James? This question creates conundrum for Christians in what is known as the impossible trinity. If God is all-knowing, why does he knowingly permit suffering? If God is all-powerful, why doesn't he intervene to put a stop to it? If God is all-loving, why does he allow those he loves to suffer so horribly? If God loved James, then why did he let him die at the hands of a murderer? The philosopher Richard Swinburne said that these questions are unanswerable, and he is right. But the book of Job, which we heard from this morning, is the first attempt in the Bible to wrestle with this difficult question. And in a sense, the author of the book of Job reaches the same conclusion as Richard Swinburne. The author, too, can find no answer, but instead points out the limits of human reason. When Job asks the question, why me? God replies, listen to this, Job. Stand still and consider the wonders of God. Do you know how God dispatches the clouds or makes the lightning flash? Do you understand how the clouds float, those wonders of him who is perfect in knowledge? And the answer is we don't know. And if we don't know all there is to know about God's creation, why should we presume to know the reason for suffering in the world? But although this question continues to perplex us, in this season of Eastertide, it is important to remember what we have learnt about suffering in the past month. First of all, we have learnt something about God through the healing ministry of his Son. Christ had compassion for those who suffered and was moved with compassion towards all who suffer in their own individual way and who so often are innocent victims. And secondly, Christ undoubtedly experienced unwarranted suffering himself through his crucifixion. He therefore not only identifies with our suffering, but has taken that suffering onto himself in a unique way. In the words of John's Gospel, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. But that said, peculiarly, it is the words from the book of Job which I find the most helpful in this most difficult of arenas. Returning to my dear friend, whom I told you about this morning, a few years later I was coming back from the 8am service of Holy Communion at Sherburn Abbey. I was just about to cross the road when I met James's mother-in-law, who had also been to the service. We paused to speak, and inevitably the question of James's murder arose. 
Why does God allow this to happen, she asked. This is an impossible question. But I found the words from the book of Job, which we heard this morning. I said to his mother-in-law, I don't know. But I do know that my Redeemer lives. And I cling on to that. Amen. And let us pray. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors and specially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them, 
who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other kind of adversity. We remember once again this morning those suffering from COVID-19. We remember particularly this morning the people of India. Those suffering from COVID, those working in hospitals, those seeking to do the best they can, and those who are going untreated and who die alone. We pray for their doctors, nurses, and care workers, and all who are involved in relieving suffering. And we pray for our own parish this morning too. We pray for those who mourn. We pray for those who are unwell. Those who are receiving hospital treatment. Those who are awaiting surgery. And those who suffer in silence and are known only to Almighty God. And we pray particularly this morning, once again, for Nazarene Zakari Ratcliffe. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Remembering particularly this morning, Sir Harry Ognall. And we remember those whose anniversary takes place this week. Kate Massey, Mary Heseltine, Marjorie Brooksbank, and James Parrish. Lord, we beseech thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen.
As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, which, which art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with thy spirit. spirit go in the peace of the risen Christ alleluia alleluia thanks, thanks be to God, God. Alleluia, alleluia alleluia 